What's up, YouTube fam? Captain Rick Stanzik here, and uh, today I wanted to show you a little bit about how I keep bait alive on my boat for my fishing charters. Um, you know, I fish regularly five days a week when it's busy. Right now it's slow, so not that much. But I like to use a lot of live bait, and uh, we catch a lot of live bait, but you can't always catch it every day. So we need to pen it up at the marina and keep it alive so that uh, on the days when we can't catch it, we have it available to us. Now keeping it in a cage is one way to do that, and I have a cage, and I'll show you where I keep my bait there. But how I like to do it on my boat is I actually keep it in the boat, in the live wells, with a separate air and uh, pump system that keeps the bait alive in there, keeps fresh water flowing in, keeps air bubbles in there. That way I don't have to dip it out every day and put it back in. It saves me time. It also saves the bait from getting beat up uh, because you're not having to net them to put them in the boat and then net them to take them out of the boat every day. So it's real nice. You just have it there ready to go. And uh, I'm going to show you my system here. All right, guys. So here's what we got here. This is a submersible aquarium pump. Plugs right into 110 and has a nice uh, six foot power cord or so. So what we do is we stick this thing in a small little five gallon garbage can with a lid and we have a bunch of holes drilled out through the side of the garbage can just like you would for a little shrimp bucket or something you'd put in the uh, in the ocean and then we zip tie this thing down in the bottom there and sink that can in the water I'll show you here in a minute I have it hanging from a rope just from my lift so this thing's always in the water plugged in and then you have a hose that comes out of here and there's some different sizes here for the thread that you can put on there. I think mine's quarter inch. And then that hose runs all the way up from the bucket with a hole drilled through the lid where the power cord and the hose go through. Out through my rack and then right into my live wells over here. I'll show you right here. So we have fresh, well salt water dripping out, but fresh salt water. And then that just goes into my well, keeping all my shrimp alive, drains right out through the drains there. Also guys, I'll put a link in the description um, to the pump here that I like to use, as well as the air pump that I like to use, um, if you're interested in getting one and uh, building your own setup. Alright, and so there we have our garbage can with the lid on. Got a lot of growth on it obviously because it just stays in the water. I actually have two pumps in there. You can see the hoses and the power cords coming right out there. And there's a rope tied up hanging the garbage can there, which is a little shorter than those power cords will go, so there's no stress on those. And all that comes up here. We got our power right here, which I have some uh, silicone tape over that and a little uh, grease in there to keep everything from keeping the moisture out not ever had problems with it shorting out or anything like that and then our hoses are just routed through here around here and then go right into the well what I also have is a bubbler which is the uh, same style bubbler you can put in your boat you know that's 12 volt but this one's 110 so it plugs in same as uh, the water pump there and just has air hoses which just hang down here and connect to air stones which you can just plop in here and they uh, they give your water some nice oxygen very fine mist of bubbles um, it's a good combination to have the water and the bubbles um, the oxygen is going to keep your bait alive but if bait starts dying especially when the water gets really hot um, you need to get have a way to get that water circulating through there so just having that pump trickling that water through keeps the water circulating keeps all that death and nastiness uh, you know from building up in there too much too many of the toxins and like I said I have two pumps so there's two hoses for the air two water pumps because I have two live wells and in that one I keep a few pinfish in um, just to keep my baits separated so they don't eat each other but we're going to feed them right now because that's another important part of keeping healthy bait is feeding them every once in a while. So we're going to give them some, uh, some squid right now. Um, you can feed them, you know, cleaned fish carcasses and chunks of meat that way. It's free. But when you're not fishing every day, squid's a nice option. It's cheap. 
and it doesn't make a real big mess so you can throw a few squid in there come back the next day and they're either going to eat the whole thing or you might just have a few little pieces of squid but not going to be any nasty bones or skin or anything like that to pull out of there all right and you can see those baits munching away in there it doesn't take them long um, once they get accustomed to being in there you can feed them pretty much every day, but they usually won't eat for the first couple days. Um, but important to keep those pinfish especially fed because otherwise they start eating each other and then they get red tailed and just not as lively and healthy, obviously. All right, and here's my regular cage, which I just keep sunk in the water. Just real simple, it's on a rope. Um, we buy these cages through a distributor and uh, they're pretty simple, you know, just kind of rubber coated wire and a latch here that you can just flip open, get right in there. We're going to toss a few squid in there for these guys. One was on it quick. But real simple. Some people like to put these on a pulley system, like you can see this one over here. But since mine's so small, it's easy enough just leaving it on this rope. And there you have it. All right, we'll give you a little closer look inside of my setup here so you guys can really see what we've done. It's obviously very dirty, so I'm going to spray it off. Not really sure what we might find in here. This thing's been closed for over a year. Doesn't look too bad. Anyways, you can see the pumps are mounted in there. I just have them zip tied to some of the holes that I drilled on the outside of the bucket here. A few rocks in there just to weight this thing down. And then here's your hole where the pumps and the wires come through the top. You can see all the little holes we drilled through the side of the bucket here. And that just goes all the way around. Now there's no real maintenance involved with this. I'm just pulled it out to show you, but I mean, this thing, like I said, it's been sitting in the water for a year. It runs, these pumps just keep running, you know. Um, I've had one on my other boat, it's been in the water for two and a half years and I plugged it in the other day, it still runs, so they last a long time, um, pretty maintenance free. Power going out is the only thing that's going to, you know, give you any trouble. Um, I made sure to run my uh, power cord all the way to the 110 that's inside the barn here so it's not coming off of the, uh, where the boat power is because those things sometimes when it rains hard they just uh, trip the breakers and stuff. And uh, I gotta say, I've never had the power uh, trip off on me, you know, due to rain or anything like that. And we just went through a torrential rain with uh, Tropical Storm Sally. Um, bait lived right through it, so it was very good to see. All right, so we're gonna zip tie the lid back on here, and get her back in the water. It'll probably take a few minutes for this thing to fill back up. I'm going to help it out a little bit. All 
All right, she looks good back in the water, ready to pump some, uh, some salt water. All right, and as you can see, we're still pumping water. Nice and happy, the bait should be happy and healthy. Um, yeah, like I said, I just pulled that thing out to show you guys. You really don't ever have to pull that thing out of the water um, for maintenance or cleaning or anything. Obviously a pump might go burn out on you every once in a while, um, but these pumps, I gotta say, uh, I don't know, they're 30, 35 bucks, something like that. Um, like I said, I've had one in my old slip on my old boat for two and a half years and it still runs. These ones have been in the water for uh, about a year and a half and they both still run good. Um, when you do install it, you know, you just have to make sure uh, that your power cord isn't going to get pulled or jerked on so hard that it rips out. Um, that's one problem that I've experienced, especially when I put uh, tried to put one on a boat that was in an area where there was waves and a lot of motion in the slips. But now one other option, guys, is if you're in an area where you have a lot of uh, wave action um, and you're worried about hanging a bucket like that with things jostling around and maybe the cords ripping um, for the power, uh, your other option is to jump in or just go in at the lowest tide and get right near a piling and just zip tie that bucket around the piling as low as it can go so that you're sure the pump is going to be in the water all the time even at low tide um, and then that shouldn't jostle around so much um, you know you can just route your power cord and your hose up the pole and to your boat where it hangs in somewhere uh, and it's not gonna be affected by the boat or your lift uh, going up and down with the waves. Um, so that's another option. That's actually kind of how I have it rigged up on my old boat since my old boat is under a uh, big giant covered uh, concrete dock. Uh, just waited for low tide and again, just zip tied that bucket around the piling, you know, at a very low level and it stays in there, it doesn't move around at all. Um, so nothing snapped or broke in two and a half years. But here where it's protected and that thing just hangs in the water, like you may be on a canal or on a you know, private dock, um, they work great. So good way to keep your bait alive and uh, a lot less hassle in the morning having to dip it in and out of a pen. So try it out guys. All right, thanks for watching. Make sure you like the video, hit that subscribe button and uh, we'll be bringing you more shortly.